so uh, one element aspect I forgot kind of within the baptism portion, thank you, Tony, for stepping up with it, is we have a gift that we give to parents uh, whose children are being baptized. It's a certificate, and then we also give them a cross. And the cross, uh, we have engraved on it their name and the date of their baptism. And uh, within our faith tradition, a lot of times it's kind of referred to as a cradle cross that you get uh, at your baptism, and it's given to you uh, to be able to hang over your crib of the child uh, or in their room so that they can always remember this date, to remember uh, this experience that there is a family and a church family that is here that loves them. And I remember uh, receiving both of those for both of my children. I've got two kids. One is in third grade uh, and one is, is five-year-old. She just started kindergarten this year. My third grader, it's a, it's a whole new experience in my life. It really is. Uh, I was telling my father the other day that I didn't really expect when I dropped off my baby at kindergarten that it was going to be that big of an emotional thing for me to realize that the baby phase of their life is kind of over and, and we're moving into this new next phase of their life. And I appreciated so much when they were younger in the crib phase because they couldn't talk and, and they couldn't say things back or do things back. And we're, we're going through that new experience right now. And uh, we're having a new experience uh, right now today even. Uh, my son, Ethan, is at his first sleepover slash birthday party. So he went yesterday and we got pictures all night from uh, the mom who was watching him and he's over there. And, and before I went and dropped him off at the house for the sleepover, my wife Lisa said, now make sure you talk to him in the car. You tell him to say please and thank you. You tell him to be good. Good. you tell him to listen um, and I did I had that kind of conversation with him in the car because you see it's it's really interesting my son uh, we had another conversation that went a little less good a few weeks ago uh, where I, I shared with some of you guys that uh, he's, he's gotten into this habit as, as a preteen I guess uh, where he likes to roll his eyes I don't know if any of you parents have experienced this and, and I remember we were, we were standing there and kind of calling him out on it and said Ethan you can't roll your eyes and he says oh, okay and I said, Ethan, you're, you're doing it again. Stop rolling your eyes. He says, all right. And I said, Ethan, the thing that you're doing right now with your eyes, you need to stop doing that. And it, I was thinking about that very specifically and in the car as I was telling him, you know, don't roll your eyes at people. Don't, when, the, when the parents tell you to do something, you need to do it. You know, don't, you, you need to act, don't act like you do at home. And he says to me, well, of course I'm not going to act like I do at home. I'm going to act like I do it at school. And... And that really just kind of hit and sunk in for me, I think, especially as we uh, read this passage in James. Uh, because it's, it's just a phenomenal thing. And I think I was talking to my wife and I said, I can't, I can't really critique him too much. Last night we were talking about it. And I said, I think a lot of times I think I've done the same thing. I think all of us as adolescents and as children in our own homes, we, we kind of do that. We act one way maybe with our parents that we don't really act perhaps in public or at school or at work or whenever we're out with other people. And it was interesting, and I was thinking about that specifically this week and, and last night and the last few days as I read through this passage in James, and as much as it talks about this idea that we are called to be doers of the word and not just hearers. You see, James is, is writing this letter. I said last week, James, we're going through this in this entire month of September as the lectionary draws us through it. And it, it's, it's this letter that has been written to the 12 tribes of Israel as they are living outside of Israel. And all of the people in Israel have kind of taken their Judaic faith, this thing that has made them uh, Jews and Jewish Christians, and because they're living in a land that they don't know, because they're living among a people group that they don't know, a lot of them have taken it into their minds that it's just, it's okay if we just participate in our faith mentally. We don't actually have to do anything. And so James is writing this letter to each of the 12 tribes in Israel as he goes around because he's specifically telling them, you see, you have to be doers. You can't just sit and listen. You can't just hear the word of God. You must participate and act in it. And it's hard, and I think especially as I listen to when Ethan says, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to act that way, you know, when I'm at school. I, I act that way when I'm, when I'm home. And it's interesting, and I think last night specifically, I was really thinking about how often do we do that even within kind of a church setting? I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who will talk to me kind of about our faith and the way that we live it out and what we believe and what we say. And even in one time, we were getting in this really in-depth conversation with uh, a parishioner at a previous church that I was working in. And, and we talked a lot about, well, what, what do you think God would say in this circumstance or that circumstance? And this person, I'll never forget their answer. He said, well, I know what God would want me to do. I'm just not going to do it. And I was amazed by that because I think it's so true for so many of us, isn't it? That there are things in life that we go through, things where we, we think, well, I know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. I know what I've been taught, or I know what, what I've been told. I know what I've read in scripture, but, but I, I'm not going to do that. 
But in fact, I think those are the moments and the times that we are called to actually act in faith. To go out and to say, yes, we are going to do, to participate, to live out our faith in action each and every day. And particularly, it becomes very easy, I think, in our world today to come into church on a Sunday morning and, and to act one way, I think, probably on Sunday, and then go to work on Monday and be totally different. And I understand the dynamics of the life that we live are very different and complex, but I think that there's something beautiful that we do here. As we unpacked more of James in Sunday school this morning, we talked about this idea that uh, even in this passage, if, we, if you unpack it even further in James chapter 1 and chapter 2, he starts to talk about the fact that in their communities of faith, he said, if you, if you look at a person who is well-dressed and rich and, and, and looks fine, they come in and you say, hey, come here and sit and have a great place of honor. But then somebody who's poor and dressed lowly comes in, you say to them, oh, go sit over there in the corner. He calls out the churches where that's happening and he says, this is a different place. You see, it's okay for those types of things to exist out in the world, but here, in a community of faith with God, we live in a place where the last are first and the first are last. We live in a place where the rich are made poor and the poor are made rich. We live in a place where everyone is invited and welcomed to participate in the beauty and the kingdom of God. What we do here is different than what we do out there, and I'm of a firm belief that the world out there might look a little bit better if what we did in here was able to be carried out into there. If we were able to take the elements of what we hope for within the church, where everyone is able to participate in a family of grace, where everyone is able to receive forgiveness and mercy and love, and if we could do a little bit more of what we do in this place where things are different out in the world, if we became doers of the word and not just hearers of it, how much more could the world change around us? Uh, today, as we kick off kind of our, our fall campaign, it's easy to see as the weather starts to change, as we hear uh, football bands start to practice and the games going on, uh, it's nice to see the beginning kind of a new year. And, and in our life of our church, we uh, consider this to be Rally Sunday. It is a day in which we uh, have an opportunity to figure out how can we do some of this stuff a little bit out into the world. And so the service will end a little bit earlier today, and, and as it ends, we'll hear in our affirmation of faith, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to be able to hear a little bit more about what the work of our church is. And if you're interested in participating and plugging in in some of those things, we would love for you to get along with it. And you've heard about some of those things where we see opportunities to be able to educate our children, to be able to feed the hungry that are in the area, to welcome people that are around us, to utilize some of the resources that we have been given within this church to go out into the world and impact it to be able to make it a greater place because of the kingdom of God. The book of James is a beautiful book because I think it forces us to really, as it says in that verse, to look in the mirror and then recognize what we look like. I told the Sunday school class this morning, I don't know about you guys, I don't like to look in the mirror. I really don't, I, I, I hate it in fact. And I, I'd much rather be comfortable with the perception of myself that's in my head than the reality that I see. But the truth is that when we go out into the world, they see what's in the mirror. So who are we going to be this week? Who are you going to be? As much as we may want to just buy into the idea of who we look like in our own heads, we must look at ourselves the way that God sees us. Live out our faith each and every day, and in doing so, may we make the kingdom of God manifest on earth all around us. Amen.